Buongiorno, throw gang. We are, we are joined by the anchovy admiral, James Harris, and myself, the commander in chow, Lauren Schlossman, a.k.a. Lorenzo the Magnificent. Welcome. What do you get to? To the weekly, because I'm driving. I'm driving today for the first time. Yeah, we decided this pretty wasted last night. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the weekly <laughs> running of the boys, Italiano edition, with today's full episode only available on patreon.com slash throngfits. James. How was your week? I'm good, man. Uh, all this heavy Italian food, whining and dining has caught up to me. So today was a bit of a timeout for me. Yeah, I think but you... But hopefully the Coca-Cola will settle my bubble guts. Your nerves and your bubble guts. How many poops did you take today? Well, we don't have to talk about that in front of the paywall. It's disgusting. Okay. Uh, like six. Okay. Before we get into James's six poops, airport adversaries, whether or not we are in fact foodstagram posers <laughs> and a complete pay- play-by-play, excuse me, of our once-in-a-lifetime business trip to Milano... Let's nah, no. get into a fit check, James. Uh, why don't you start first? Oh, right. Right? Okay. Or do you start first? I, Let's go. I always throw to you first. You yes, I'm throwing first. to you right now. Okay. As um, the driver, earlier today, I was in a fit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That you realize that you, you have to do the fit check of the clothes you're wearing? Yeah, I'm wearing the same thing earlier. I'm saying okay. er, today I put on a fit. That you saw and you were immediately repulsed and you were like, I am, I refuse yeah, give me diarrhea. to take a fit pic of you. Yeah. Um, you were a bit hungover and being bratty, but relax, buddy. I think I uh, I think I ruined your mood. But anyway, what I was <laughs> wearing earlier and what I'm still wearing now are John Elliott. Oh, I wear uh, Gucci loafers, John Elliott socks, <laughs> <laughs> Wrangler jeans. You're just describing Fitz past. <laughs> uh, no. Yesterday, what were you wearing yesterday? Yesterday, I was I, wearing no. okay. fit check. Uh, a Gitman vintage shirt. I had on my new Libero jacket earlier. With the racing stripe Ferrari. With, with, the, with the racing Ferrari. With the racing stripe I have on my Rolex. I am still married, despite being an absentee husband abroad. Hmm. Uh, and I'm wearing Supreme Hanes boxer briefs, and I'm drinking like you, a Coca-Cola Classico. How much does Jenna love that you're not traveling for work? Love that I'm not traveling for work? That you are now traveling for that work. That I am now. Oh, well. That we're now international men of not much mystery. <laughs> well, she was super bummed that, like, I was going to Italy without her. Yeah. So, like, Wait, her wasn't she almost supposed to come on this trip? Or was she almost supposed to come to no, London? No, she wanted to. When we were Manchester. Go, before it was Manchester and it was London, that's when she, she wanted to come with. Okay. But, um, alas, we were in the north. So <laughs> that did not happen. Um, James, what are you wearing today, uh, sweetheart? I believe these Ciao are. Ciao, Bella. I'm, not, I'm only going to describe the clothes I'm wearing. I believe these are anonymous w- socks. Well, you could talk about the shoes you wore earlier. That's what. That's where your. That's where your beef. Well, I packed three shoes. I packed Bonnie's because it's been pissing rain well, all fucking now week. Who's describing fits of of fits past? Gucci loafers because we're here. Mm-hmm. Um, in the name of the Padre Madre and the Gucci. <laughs> uh, and then my Reebok DMX show shoutouts. Anonymous from socks. S K Manor Hill big boy cords. A vintage tee. I just searched Pavarotti merch on eBay. Oh, this also one, like, two or three things. Quite appropriate for. Oh, we already have a outro music, right? Well, it's Dolph. It's going to be Young Dolph. Oh, well, it was supposed to be Richard Cheese Creep. <laughs> <laughs> but that was for Young Dolph. Yeah. Big rip. Um, our Lagache velvet shirt, a vintage Cebu Lions hat, and then the New York adorned earring, which we're going to get to. Oh, my God. That's you right. You probably can't tell because we're, post- we're uh, recording on a potato. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> real scab hours over here. Dude, your ear is fully infected. Um, okay. So first off, James, why are we here in Italy? For the we're here all, we don't know. to celebrate the Cheapy Company, Cheapy. Cheapanta, um, big project that they have capping off their anniversary year that we can't talk about just yet, yeah. but we are a big part of it. We were in their internal docs, which right. I reviewed. You didn't, no. And so when I was telling you about this, you were very surprised. We were next. The other day. We were like alongside some big names, uh, just like they're like they're billboarding the whole city. Sick, um, you know, whatever, like paid advertising, editorial, all that good stuff, and throwing fits. We are here filming video content. Yes, sir. Ski. Jimmy and Larry learn how to be Italian. More so we're just basically doing a bunch of Italian shit. Yeah. Like that- harassing women and <laughs> being perverted psychos. And not working hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Napping, being perverted, getting shit faced, smoking darts, etc. Yeah. Um shout closing, out closing everything at three PM. Yeah. Shout out to our friends at GP. Um, shout out to Big Boss and Rico and, and Rico. our new friend, fucking Giancarlo. Joe. Oh. Giovanni. <laughs> What's uh, the video guy's name? What's the director's name? Marco. <laughs> Not Carlo. <laughs> Fuck. 
Giovanni. <laughs> God damn it. Giancarlo is the name of someone who uh, rude, will, will not be joining us, unfortunately, <laughs> tomorrow. Um, I got confused, dude. I'm jet. My brain is on permanent. You're jet driving. Lag mode. You never drive. This is hard for you. I know. Yo, I am a terrible driver, <laughs> as you can see. Um, have you been to Italy before? Yeah, I went with my family when I was like in high school. Boring. Yeah. Where was- in Italy? Firenze, Roma, Siena. I think that's it. Okay, but that was the one and only time. Yeah. Okay. You happy to be back? Oh, and I've been here for a Marcelo Berlan, oh, County right. of Milan press trip when he did like a G-Shot collaboration or something. So that you were you were in Milan for, for like 72 hours. For yeah. County of Milan. Yeah, exactly. Is Milan a county? It's a city. I don't know, bro. Fucking <laughs> shit. You're the one with the computer? <laughs> uh, no Wi-Fi over here in this corner of the apartment. No Wi-Fi in my um, bedroom either. Did you, uh, and obviously, I mean, if anyone's been following the failed social experiment that has been my life, I obviously dressed like an Italian for many years, cosplaying, yeah. uh, basically been obsessed with the culture you said, my entire uh, life. I love it here. You said there's three types of Italians. Oh, yeah. Euro trash, Sprezzatore dudes, and immigrants. <laughs> I, I did, which I think is like a pretty fair assessment. I call it like I see it. Um, What's it like for you to be in the fucking land of spreads? Well, I've never been to Milan, so this this is exciting. I've been to Firenze. I've been to Portofino, Praiano, the Amalfi Coast, Capri, etc. Never here, though. So you've been taking in the local sites, like the McDonald's down the what? street. Uh, Enrico was telling us that Milan is like the New York City. Right. And Rome is like the L.A. Yeah. This is like this. Pe- this is uh, 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 this is we're in the center of industry. That's like there's people like yeah, this is business. where shit is actually happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, OK. Now, Italian business, not an oxymoron. <laughs> Did you have any pros and cons as far as like, you know, just being in Italy that you wanted to share with the friends at home? Big pro. OK. Well, first of all, everything is just like like the oldness of everything is a big pro. Here um, though, this isn't that everything. Old of a everything place. like has weight. Like these doors that open to the balcony, like have like heft to them. They're not like cheaply made. Like okay. the elevator door that you've been slamming. That I got yelled at by the way when I was picking up these cokes. Really? Yeah. Some guy was like, uh, "The door is so loud." I slammed it like he's one like time. he's like you on six. I'm like yeah, it, whatever. You yeah. got a heavy hand. Yeah. You've Larry Ledfoot over I here. Did. <laughs> um, big pro is that the norm, and I truly believe that this is the right way it should be done, mm-hmm. is that the toilet seats are left up. Yeah. Because that way, if you're the type of guy that, you know, when the toilet seat's down and you don't lift the seat and you piss all over the seat, mm-hmm. that's never going to be an issue with the toilet seat is always up. We were in a super fancy bar having cocktails yesterday, and you said that there was there's two bathrooms. And you're like, you oh, avoid the green bathroom, hit the red one, because somebody literally pissed all over the seat. I think I think it was just water, because, like, the flush was, like, very violent, but also, <laughs> like, um, yeah, you love shitting in bars. But, uh, yeah. No, no, no. So I think that, yeah, so that's a big pro is that the toilet seat is always up. So if you're a woman, you put it down, mm-hmm. and there's not going to be any piss on it. Sure. Right? Or that's if you're totally pooping fair. and you put it down, yeah. there's not going to be I any mean, piss I, on I, it. I mean, as a married man cohabitating with a woman, uh, I get absolutely fucking fried and roasted if I leave that shit up. So I'm used to, you know, always putting that down, but I guess, you know, I haven't really been touching toilet seats since we've been out here. I'm a pretty, <laughs> I can aim pretty well, so I'm His not really... touch toilet seats. I mean, for toilets. personally speaking... I mean, Italy is the best, dude. Best food, in my opinion. Best wine. Most beautiful women. Fucking best fucking fashion. <laughs> One con, uh, which is unfortunate, is mainly because we're Americans. Uh, everywhere that you go, if you want to enter an establishment, mainly to like eat or drink somewhere inside, you have to show your green pass. You just, that's, how, that's how it exists in New York. <laughs> no, right. But we, we, and which we, well, I didn't, it's not called a green <laughs> pass in New York. I'm just trying to sound smart, dude. Give me a second here. <laughs> And going, my point is, going. so you and I are going everywhere, and we're like, here's our fucking vaccination card. And you just look like a fucking cheap-ass, ugly American. Well, it doesn't help when you, when you Larry Ludfoot, walks in the, the place and he goes, we're Americans. This is what we have. No, 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 no. You say we're Americans. First of all, have. I say, ciao. <laughs> I, I actually am impressed with our grip of the Italian language. Prego. No, well, that's your welcome. Grazie. <laughs> yeah. Grazie mille. Prego. Um, and then a big con is that everything closes at 3 o'clock. Yeah. From like three to seven. Well, a late lunch is not possible. Or an early dinner. All the well, restaurants open for dinner at like seven thirty eight. Yeah, you're right. You and I are big like six PM diners. Yeah, I guess I guess that, that's totally fair. Um I mean, everything else rules. Yeah. Uh so so we're we're having a good time here. All right, let's talk about this fucking trip that we had. Starting when oh, did damn, we got shit written out? Do I have took I've been taking notes the Why whole time. Let's keep it posy over here. <laughs> I, I don't know. You don't want to keep it posy? Uh might have, is that I think it's always <laughs> pinned. I think it's always pinned. Whatever, I deleted it so we can be mean, <laughs> so we can be mean to each other. Um, there is, I think we talked about this, but there is a, an overall note at the top of every 
boys only run of show that says keep it positive. Yeah. Um, I can't say how well that's working out for us, to be totally honest. But anyway. It's going great. Okay. So we fly out. So we flew out Saturday. Late Red as eye. shit. 11 p.m. flight. 11 p.m. Emirates. Got a late start, even though yeah. the flight was a third full. Yeah. Uh, I love fucking Emirates, dude. Uh, I've never best. flown Emirates before. Uh, fucking fire airline. Bro. Very impressed. I, s- I flew to Dubai with Snapchat on Emirates. I think it was Emirates. I was Snapchat going to Dubai. Just we, were, to like, we were opening up Snapchat there. Oh, like, why did you have to go? To work with like the local like magazines that we were like and like sports channels that we were working with there. Do you remember any of those magazines and sports channels? <laughs> like Sky Sports, UAE. Okay. I don't know. Um, so you flown Emirates. Was that you fly first class? Business. And it was fucking gas. Like yeah. I had like my own pod. You know, the food was phenomenal. Uh, I think I slept like on the way back. I basically slept the whole fucking time. Sure. It was great. Um but coach isn't, or economy isn't bad either. Yeah, we were in like that, I, I don't, I guess it's not, it is coach, but like we're in that like flex zone, or maybe flex just meant that we could change our seats, but. We paid for the ability to choose our seats. Right. Which you accidentally did when you were buying your own ticket, because we had to buy our ticket separately. Yeah, it's like 60 bucks extra, it's nothing crazy. I know, but watching you have to like navigate the act of like buying an airplane ticket, it was like. What do like you mean watching? Like a, oh, because we were doing it on Zoom. That's like right, a baby giraffe see. walk. Yeah, I mean, listen, normally I have, you know. I'm taking an extra few days. With my girlfriend, yeah, you are, uh, which which we could talk about. So, in terms of travel, like terms of traveling, uh, I know that you said that you wanted to talk about a swaggy Japanese dude that you saw in the <laughs> airport, and then I want to talk about my mortal enemy. <laughs> the only thing about the swaggy Japanese dude is that I this saw him guy, too. By the way, th- you clocked him. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. Is that you oh. gave him a full up? Well, he's down. wearing fucking Rick Stompers, bro. Yeah, and, like, and Y three and. Yeah, the, the bottom half. Sweats, the maybe? bottom half of the fit was fire. The top half, whatever. No, it's just really funny that you were like, bub up. You gave him like the fucking Italian yeah. once over. No, of course, dude. I had to fucking. I scanned this man for. I scanned for swag, dude. <laughs> Is that something that you meant? You mentioned this when we were having drinks. You're like the three guy sunglasses. Because I, I, I pointed out. I said, Yo, look at that guy. He's got on great pants. Uh, and then you mentioned that like you've not you noticed me checking out dudes. Do you not do it, or do you do it more surreptitiously? Uh, I think more surreptitiously. Not as like. Not as obviously, like you look like an Italian man, like about to harass a woman, <laughs> but but a man about yes. their fit, about yes. their joints. Yes. Um. So obviously, uh, we that's it. That's all I want to say. We, we didn't we didn't talk to that guy. We were just admiring his swag. Maybe me a bit more inappropriate swag than you. Who? Um. But we had an interesting. Uh. I pointed out to you there was a giant <laughs> morbidly obese man, uh, being wheeled to our gate. Um, which already had my fucking, you know, spider sense tingling because I'm like, S- how is this guy good? How could he even sit next to him? But what, re- what was hilarious to me, and maybe this is, I'm not like <laughs> fat shaming. I mean, this is, man, this, I mean, how much did this guy weigh? <laughs> I think he had like a glandular issue. Like, I don't know, dude. He, what, his legs were the width of his couch, <laughs> right? But like yeah, the was, top half wasn't like, uh, eh, <laughs> and, and I will say this guy that, weighed like 600 pounds. Listen, man, if I had a glandular issue, I wouldn't be getting wheeled up to the gate carrying a giant sack of McDonald's, which is what made me mention it to you. This guy literally got fucking door-to-door service from the terminal McDonald's to his fucking gate. Well, you know, like the person pushing him had to like it was stand an old in, ass woman had to stand in line with him at McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> she was literally. Yo, I, I don't know if you saw this. Um excuse me. He handed her like a, a few bills. He tipped her, yeah. He tipped her and was and said, and this is like such a dick thing. He goes, she's like, oh, don't worry, you earned it. <laughs> Word. Yeah. Well, at that point, I was like, fuck this guy. Um, it's always, and I guess you know, it's funny because when you're when you're, I wanted the, the fucking wheelchair, bro. I couldn't walk. Oh, that's right. Do you want to talk about your current ailment? <laughs> well, now that my legs are fine, but for like, I did a, a leg workout, a leg blaster that uh, my legs were fucking torched until like from Thursday to Tuesday. You were literally walking like a man with bionic legs. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a compliment. You were not the million dollar man. You like I thought I looked like man. a like a principal with a fat ass and like a walkie talkie. Or just like a guy with keys. or someone with a stick up their ass. Oh I right, exactly. Um no, what th- what was sad to see, and talking about the woman that he tipped, because, like, okay, let's say you're in fucking Italy, and you see Nona making tortellini in the kitchen, it's so romantic. But in America, when you see a fucking old-ass grandma or grandpa, like, being a cashier at Walmart, or a fucking wheelchair pusher at JFK, it's just so depressing. So on top of this guy... She needs money for inflation, bro, because of President Byron. Um, but but uh, ultimately... Uh, karma almost got me, because after yeah. fucking roasting this man... Well, we're- I manifested it, right? Yeah. I was like, yep. You were like, 
You were like, how does that guy fly? Does he only have one seat? Yeah, you have to buy two seats. And I was or like, whatever, I yeah. bet he can't fly in like the pods, even if he could afford it. I bet he has to buy like two seats in economy and just like lift the armrest up. Right. And then as we were on separate sides of the plane flying the poor man's version of first class, which is coach, but your own entire row. Fuck yeah. Which honestly, all right, if you would you, how much was first class? Because I know we like check. It was to upgrade to business would be another two grand each, just one way. Okay. Damn. So four That's grand a, a person to fly business. Just one way. And our tickets were I forget. Like, un, like I forget. Five hundred, six hundred, yeah. seven hundred, I don't know. And 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 sprawling out across that row. By the way, there's like no one on this flight. I think it was like a third full. It was a giant plate. But yeah, it's great. Sprawled across that row in kind of like the fetal position, while obviously not like super comfortable. I will say I'd rather do that than pay fucking four grand Absolutely. Every, every day of the week. But anyway, we're on separate sides. Honestly, the, the travel ban fucking rules because no one, the yeah. flight was so empty because no one, no foreigners are coming into the country so there's no one flying back. Sure. Keep the, the travel ban forever. We were on a flight that was ultimately going to Dubai and was, uh, was stopping over in Milan. But <laughs> I'll let you say the joke because uh, when that guy was barreling towards me no. down my row. Okay, barreling's a strong okay, word. Sorry. I don't think this man's ever barreled in his life. Uh, you had you, you had the, the best comment, which I won't. Uh, what did I say? You said butcher coming. <laughs> the butcher coming. The Funny. butcher coming. Um, so anyway, that was uh, that's the airport adversary <laughs> that that was previously and he mentioned. Like, he like put his bags up over you in overhead. Well, he yeah. And there's a moment where I was like, oh my god, and like he would have you know separated because like there was nobody yeah. in the flight but like there was a moment where i was like oh my god he's sitting next to lawrence i was like and i was like this is what i deserve honestly <laughs> like I, I i definitely uh deserve to have this man fucking how's the fit how's his fit were you clocking him i mean there was it was stretch je- uh, jeggings for the uh for the glandular issue apparently yeah. i guess whatever um and ultimately he did have his own row so kind of like everyone ended up winning yeah uh, he had his own row whether or not he bought two of those seats in the in the in the four seat row, who's to say? He made it to Italy. Um, we basically slept the whole time. Anything notable happened to you? I had a faux pas. Uh, I didn't speaking. eat a single meal, and I had my mask down under my no- like I had the Republican mask on. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't covering my nose, but it wasn't an issue. Oh, yeah, I just, I just like turn over to the side, and I just was like fully. I was. Fully off? I mean, I'm, I went full fucking anti mask on that. No, I, I just slept basically. I slept like probably like five hours. Yeah. Um, I did get food uh, and uh, a glass of Pinot Noir, which I promptly uh, immediately spilled all <laughs> over the floor, which I then uh, used uh, one of the, the unused blankets for my row to just oh, sop up. Dude. <laughs> it's fucked up. I know it is fucked up because like the whole thing is. Uh, just, did anyone see or no, like, did no, 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 no. I, was, I was fucking in and out like SEAL Team fits, dude. Oh. I couldn't. I was so ashamed. But I, I will say what kind of sucks and ultimately probably is definitely bad karma uh, for coming home yeah. is that the whole thing is that, you know, the people that were going to Dubai were kind of like annoyed because they had to like get off the plane because they obviously got to like clean it. And it was like a fucking murder scene in my row. So ultimately, sorry to the <laughs> fine folks at Emirates. Uh, <laughs> good looking flight attendants. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't know we were going to talk about that. Well, yeah. Well, what well, can I not say what you said? What did I say? You said, "Oh, yo, it's a shame that we're flying uh, Emirates during COVID." He goes, "Normally, you without right. you, they wouldn't have masks on. You, like they're like this is you said they're the most attractive airline, bro. In terms of staffing, Dubai, I was like talking to one of the flight attendants, and I was like almost. Well, I pussied out and I didn't, but I was like, damn, like I wanted to like, ask for a number. She was oh. crazy hot. Yeah, you weren't trying to do a mile high thing. You just wanted to ask her out like a gentleman. Yes. Okay. And then uh, Tinder in Dubai is all Russian prostitutes, sex workers. Really? Yeah. At that's least I mean, as that's of, convenient. At least as of like 20, I feel eight, like 17 or something. Is that not like, uh, I mean, does that happen in America at all? Because Tinder is an American company, right? Yeah, but... It, well, so I'm saying that the most Tinder sure to users... remember, I don't have Tinder anymore because I have a girlfriend, but um, right. you, had, you get like bots on there. Sure. Right. right. Like sex, scammers and like stuff. Like sex scammers. But this was truly like Russian, like Natalia, whatever. Like, Fire. you know, I love that. Like message me for rates. Yo, fucking uh, shout out fucking all sex workers. Let's go. <laughs> message me to collaborate. Well, I was, I was just thinking. meat smashing. I was saying that's got to be uh, not like par for the course. Like it, it probably is like obviously in Dubai because like there's all that money being thrown around. But I would imagine that when you go to like a foreign country where most people probably don't use Tinder. They probably have like no Dubai. I, sorry, Tinder's like everywhere. No, I know that, but I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if we were on, if you're on Tinder in Italy and there is prostitutes as well. Maybe is yeah. prostitution legal here? No, I don't think so. All right, I don't know. Maybe some of our Italians. Uh, Let's see the fucking prime minister could weigh in. Uh, so we landed, whatever. Slept the whole flight. Took the red eye. We get here. We saw a sneakerhead being <laughs> detained at customs, which was kind of like 
a beautiful thing to see. You know, I didn't see it, and you were like, you're like whipping out your phones, like, you know, oh yeah, like, bro, don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, basically, I guess some. Well, he was Asian. I don't know uh, if he was uh, traveling oh. uh, to. I don't know if he's an Italian Asian man or or actually young man because there was his presumably his mom. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I guess the customs thought that he was like bringing all these sneakers into Too the country to sell or whatever. Yo, he might have had. 25 pairs of like rare kicks on the table that they what were like, like going what was through. was like the rarest pair you saw? I saw a comb, Supreme Forces. Okay. Uh, I saw a bunch of off whites, obviously. Um, all Nikes, all checks. There's been a lot less Yeezy on feet than I thought we would see here. Yeah. You mentioned, you said that you've been seeing a lot of good sneakers on cool, the cool guys that we've been hanging out with. Like you were like, they have great taste in sneakers. Yeah. Um, Hoka's New Balances. Hoka's, mainly Hoka's New Balances. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, not a ton of Yeezys. I was expecting Giovanni, or in what you call him, John Carlo. He was wearing some like power boots, I think. Yeah, when we went when we had our fine dining experience. Yeah, not sneakers, but yeah, good, good for. I mean, we're hanging out with the coolest motherfuckers, you know, on Sesame Street. That's yeah. how we do. Shout out, fucking GP, for a, a third time. Um, so we get to the Airbnb. What is your review of our Airbnb? I love this place. You immediately shit as soon as you walk in. Mm-hmm. You um, know me, and I have to then ask you while you're shitting to bring out your passport. So you get photographed because yes. I guess that's the thing here. Sure. Um, <laughs> I really like this. I mean, I didn't know that you're sleeping on a couch. Yeah. So I'm not sorry great. for that. I was like, yo, take this bedroom because we have this beautiful terrazzo. Yeah. And we confirmed can smoke on there. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, you have access to it through your room. Yeah. Take this room. I that's funny because when that happened, I thought you were playing like a little kind of like it was like a power play or a mind game where like you because when you walk into the room, because we took a little tour with our with our host. The host daughter. The host daughter. Uh, it's like pretty clear to me that it's a pullout couch. I did I, not see that. It and was I a thought, couch. and uh, you are staying in like the more master suite. That's what is that, like a full size mattress downstairs? Yeah, which I actually dumped an entire analogy of water on. Yeah. I keep finding new wet spots <laughs> on it. Um, and yeah. Now, and now my blanket and pillows are covered in blood as well. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, we got to talk about your ear, but that's that happened on, well, we realized that on Monday, so we're not there yet. Um, interesting. <laughs> now, this has been two. Air, Airbnbs where uh, you are staying downstairs and I'm staying up there upstairs, proving that you are a bottom and I'm a top. Oh right, your your gay joke. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you're such an edgy comedian, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, you, am I going to catch you at the fucking uh, the Bell House anytime soon? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it depends how gay and retarded I'm trying. Well, it's to a get six floor walk light. up, so. So walking up and down is a fucking bitch. Well, we have an elevator. We have an elevator. That Shitty been... ass old elevator. I, it's romantic. I feel like I'm in, I don't know I feel about like I'm that. in a board movie. Yeah. Um, I really like. Clearly, like the person who lived here. I don't think they live here now. But there's like a lot of like Italian modernism touches. Right. You were saying that your interior design friend said that the next the next trend in interior design after mid century modern, which is having this extendo moment, is what did you call it? Like Italian modernism. Okay. Which is what seventies and eighties. Yeah, like 50s, 50s oh, to okay. the 80s. Um, I mean, you see with, like, the couches, like, the the Togo couches. Yeah. Like, the shits that are on the ground mm-hmm. that look like fucking military pants. Yeah, the turds. Yeah, the turd exactly. couches. The glizzy couch. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I really like it. Th- our, I think our host works in clothing because she has the most serious uh, oh, ironing. Yeah. yeah, that, like, Japanese iron I've ever seen. fucking the real deal. But yeah, I like this place. I like being on the top floor. There's no one above us. Uh, we have two floors, so when we're being loud up here, it's totally fine. Yeah. This That's is it. a nice place. I like this a lot better than the, L- the L.A. Airbnb. Um, we strategically are staying by the train station because we've been taking a lot of day trips, which we'll mention. Uh, but overall, I would say this is, uh, as far as our Airbnb experiences go, this has been, I think this has been su- the, the most superior. Yeah. Number one. How would you rank them? Between Manchester, L.A. Ooh, Manchester, yeah. definitely the fucking worst, for yeah. sure. I would say L.A., uh, 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 middling second, and this place is pretty tight. I'd say this one, Manchester 2, LA 3. Really? Yeah. Mainly because the LA crib had the worst interior design of all time? Yeah. And also, like, where I was, it was, like, not... Like, the downstairs wasn't good. Yeah. The the Manchester loft, ultimately, like... And because it was fucking, like, freezing, and because of, like, the kind of budget-ass bathroom situations, ultimately, for me, that was, oh, like... Oh, I forgot about that. You are beating off two feet from my s- snoozing no, head. No, speaking of which, the weirdest thing about this place is uh, my shower is, like, a... It's, like, this tubular capsule, so it feels like you're... you're being you know you're you're beating off in like the teleporter from Star Trek, <laughs> it's insane. Like you beat off, I'm like you're hitting like I hit the elbow. Like I'm like, <laughs> it's, like it's we it's very you gotta get more efficient with your motions. Yeah, clearly. 
<laughs> I'm wailing on myself. Fucking no. Um, so that, that's my uh, that's my one complaint. Ultimately, uh, <laughs> after checking into Airbnb, we tried to eat. That's when we realized everything was closed. Uh, we found one place where we could get drinks, and you, which was recommended by a lot of people, right? Barbasso. It's like yeah. the classic cocktail spot here in Milan, no? Yeah, and uh, you got... Uh, I you got s- punked, bro. You proceeded to get a goblet, a giant goblet Chalice. Negroni. Yeah, yeah you thought like cup. you thought you were getting. We thought you might be getting punked. Yeah, I thought they were like, "Oh, americano, give him the bigger glass, eh?" <laughs> but um, apparently that's just what they. That's her thing. I don't know how much it was because the receipt wasn't itemized. Right. But I was like four Negronis in one fucking glass. It was gigantic. Yeah. Um, it was abs- size my head. It was it was absolutely comical. Um, I'm it was sure the size of two of your heads. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, three of my heads. <laughs> well, one my my head is equivalent to one Negroni, so maybe four <laughs> four of my heads. Four stacked, Larrys stacked on top of each other. Uh, went to the showroom, met Giovanni, oh, um, checked Bravo. out checked out some Johns, uh, and then had a a wonderful dinner. Uh, where the power went out four times, which <laughs> yeah. was fucking hilarious. Like that's the most Italian shit ever. Well, okay, thank you to Giovanni. Enrico, Massimo, uh, Kevin from Mohawk's homie. We've just gotten a ton of like good recommendations. Yeah, and like, from the people, and from the people on, yes. on Instagram. Shout out to everyone. And we haven't um, gone to any real tourist traps yet. I no. feel like yesterday was kind of the only time we were like doing tourists. Well, it was our only f- first free day. Yeah. Um, but we're going to places where they have like one English menu. If Right, any, sure. Right? If, if at all. And yeah. so this place was like, yeah, this, it was like, yo, this is like a true Milanese. Uh, Melani- yeah. M- Milano, Milanese, whatever meal. Yeah. Um, o- real Osteria vibes. Yeah, but we no had no English just... menu at this place. No, we just had to kind of point to be like, yo, let me <laughs> get one of them. You point to the dudes like a uh, pasta next to us, and you're like, I will have what he's at, yeah. literally. Um, and I will say, we've been eating fucking good. I think we got three pastas to share. We got lamb, lamb skewers. skewers. Oh, that was an that was an Enrico. Yeah. Recommendation because he definitely mentioned the lamb skewers. We got the rigatoni carbonara, fucking slapped. We got the fucking spaghetti pomodoro, fucking fresh as fuck. And then we got a fucking what do you get? Ragu, a, ra- a, yeah, a tagitel ragu. Yeah, which was also slapped. And then the lamb skewers that come out in a fucking clay pot after yeah. the pasta. That was Bro, incredible. I don't know if I can handle the um, pasta primi and then secondi like carne. Last night we went too hard. But that that when we got the three pastas and then topped it off with like a couple lamb skewers, that was nice. I thought yeah. that was an appropriate amount of food. Last night, which we'll get into, which we'll get into when it's the appropriate time in the run of show, that was too much. Okay, Monday morning we wake up super early for a day trip. We're not going to spoil. Well, I guess we could say we we'll go to Bologna. We went to Bologna. Can we say what we were doing there? I don't. Or is that too spoiled? We went to the Massimo Osti oh, yeah, archive. We on, yeah, we put on Instagram. So everyone knows. Yeah, the Massimo Osti archive. But you woke up with your fucked up ear. Oh. Why don't you explain what's going on? So woke up in the middle of the night. Because of jet lag and felt some like wetness here, and I was like, "Oh fuck, my ears definitely like pussing," but like there's nothing I can do about it. It's like four in the morning. Had it been bothering you leading up to traveling? Like slightly, very slightly. Not like anything to to like care about, really. Right. And for anyone keeping score at home, while I switched from uh, the stud that I got pierced with to a hoop, you've stayed with your your little eye. Yeah. So your it's turquoise been, eye. It's been about like five or six weeks since I got it like shortened or right. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, which and the guy was like, "Yo, it's super clean. This like healed really well. Like, shouldn't have any issues." Da 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 da. Fucking liar! So I wake <laughs> up and there's just like blood all around my ear, and it's on the bed. It's on the pillows. It's on the bedding. I'm like, I message the woman immediately. I'm like, "Oh my god! Like, you can charge me. I'll reimburse you. Whatever." She is so nice. She's like, "Don't worry. I just want you to have a nice, relaxing stay." Um, she didn't <laughs> send me a text where she was like. Hey, James, like, so is the bedding uh, dirty or what? And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. But then she was like, it was just whatever, English miscommunication. Um, and, yeah, it's just fucking scabby. I think what happened is the clasp, the skin grew over it. Insane. And so now it is in my ear. Yeah. And so I can, like, pull it I can pull it out so it's, like, sticking out. And then you can see, like, all, like, the scabby and the blood and shit. But I can't, like, take it out because the clasp can't fit through the hole yeah. on this side. It's lo- it's locked in. It's sealed for freshness on the back. There's exactly. no there's no back. The back is in your ear. The back is in my ear. So I think I had to go and just get it like cut out. I don't know. They're going to perform surgery on a grape on that motherfucker? I mean, th- there was a moment where I was like, do I just fucking go to the the pharmacia and just get a fucking like razor blade and Oh shit, do it. Slash it out. DIY. I don't know. 
Yikes. I'm happy it didn't. But then I Googled it, and apparently it's fairly common, so. Not well, I'm, hap- I'm happy it didn't come to that, though. I will say that, again, karma coming for me, because as, as soon as we left, oh, yeah. and I was criticizing you being like. At 7 in the morning. I was like, yeah, it's it like, like 6.45. It's like still dark out. pitch black out. It's pissing rain. And I'm like, damn, is there going to like be blood on cam? Is this like, are you going to be okay? What's going to happen to the content? Uh, my Sambas. Which are a fucking death trap. I almost, I literally fucking fell and busted my ass. My shoulder still hurts. That was fucking. It was literally. I criticized you for about like thirty seconds. I was fucking dumping on you. It was rude of me. And then immediately once I was done, fucking completely fell in the middle of the fucking street like a drunk. It was absolutely horrendous. And you were like, "Oh no, my pants. They're broken." I'm like, "Are you okay?" (laughs) Yeah, damn. I could have. It could have been bad, but luckily, uh, just minor hiccups for both of us, physically speaking. Uh. The trains that we took, those fancy fucking... Oh, incredible. Well, also, we were sitting in, like, pretty, pretty mall. Pretty right. Ma. And uh, you made a point that I hadn't thought about, but those are... Versus the nationalized trains in England, which fucking suck. No, those are privatized. Oh, right, right. Excuse me. Those are the privatized trains, which you think would be better, but th- those fucking suck. It's the fucking nationalized trains here that are fucking fire. Hey, man. Mussolini. You know? I mean, a broken clock is right twice a day. I mean, All he wanted man, to do was make the trains run on time, and he did. And he did, and now they are fucking fire. Um, yeah, I enjoyed that experience. You know, nice little fucking, you know, getting to see the Italian countryside, sitting in fucking big-ass captain's chairs. Yeah. It's like an hour train ride to Bologna. Yeah. Um, the crew that we were filming with were an interesting cast of characters. We already talked about the sneakers. It was hilarious. And great guys. And it was hilarious to see them fucking... Uh, we had lunch with all of them. So we toured the archive. We met Lorenzo Osti, Massimo Osti's son. We got some great content coming out with him. Uh, were you impressed by the archive? And then we'll get back to the crew. Yeah. And, like, I, this is, like, no bullshit. And not just because we're here, but I think we both feel this way. I think just being around GP, like... And seeing the way that a lot of the crew wears it because they're like CP guys mm-hmm. and they're just like in it. Heads, they're, they're always wearing like different jackets. I'm like very. Yes, the archive was fucking sick. The vintage and it's also just incredible. like, yeah, I'm just looking at it. And I'm just like, damn, like I need to find like a CP vintage dealer because yeah. I want to get my hands on some of this. Yeah. Not just like the stuff that we wore in Darwin where that was kind of our first taste. Sure. Of like, and yeah. also just the exhibition. Absolutely. But um, yeah, I feel like vintage GP also like, I mean, whatever. We're a fucking fashion podcast. We can talk about this. I was telling you, I was like. Obviously, like the brand that shall not be named, right? Stone Island. Right. That's just like a corny hype brand. At this point, I would right? not. You could not. You'd have to pay me to wear it. Yeah. Which hey, you Stone couldn't Island, just like if Stone Island just gave me free Stony, I would say thank you and I would sell it. Yes. I would not wear it. Yes. The only piece of Stone Island that has a bathing suit. And oh, that's right. It has like an embossed badge, well, it's stitched on, right or whatever. It's like a giant, like yeah. uh, stitching thing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like the badge, whatever. It's just fucking. I mean, even when and even when you're not wearing it, whatever, w- when you take the badge off, yeah. which is like even a weirder move. Where you're like, why are you eh. wearing? I guess if I had to wear it, I would do it with. I would probably want to keep it more low key because because that's like the it's a box logo. I mean, that's right. literally what it is. Um, and while I love my Supreme, you're never gonna catch me in any fucking logo stuff. I mean, that's really how I feel about most brands. And and CP obviously has the iconic goggles on a bunch of those jackets, or like which is you like, know the watch uh, uh, viewer that other yeah. like. But other than that's, that's how people low know. Key. That's how people know it. And it's like very obvious when you're wearing CP when you see the goggles, and that's like uh like almost a gimmick at this point. Yeah. But I don't know. It's just so fucking good. Like uh, all the vintage stuff, the showroom with with the I guess that's spring twenty two. Yeah. The stuff we saw. Oh, um, fire! And again, fire color. Not palette. just saying this. Like it really. It, also, it's a brand unlike the homies at Arteryx, which everybody has Arc. Everybody loves Arc. CP is kind of like, if you know, you know. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah, so the crew we were with, uh, not only wearing uh, Stone Island amazing, amazing Lee. Like Giovanni was wearing the Barber CP jacket. That's and right. before, I was like, yo, this thing is a fucking tank. It's a beast, but it's so like complicated. But the way he was wearing it, I was like, yo, this actually, you know, with big pants and like good sneakers and just like a, a nice like uh, wool, like purple mm-hmm. uh, jumper, sweater underneath. Ooh, jumper. Nice. Yeah. No jumper. Um, <laughs> yeah, it just looked fucking great. That's all. Um, it was hilarious to eat lunch with them after we filmed at the archive. And meeting Lorenzo was awesome. He's super charismatic, fucking hilarious, has amazing stories about his dad, who's an absolute fucking legend. If you're not familiar with Massimo Osti, buy Jacob Gallagher, friend of the pod's new book. Did you buy it yet? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's the book called? Men's Fashion Book? American Men's... F- uh, the, me- the men's fashion book, yeah, on Fidon and uh, thanks Faden. to contributing Fidon. editor Jacob Gallagher, yeah, and uh, read the read the the 
the paragraph on Massimo <laughs> and, and familiarize yourself. Um, so after we did all that, which was fucking awesome and really felt like a once in a lifetime moment, got a lot of compliments. Um, a big fan of Massimo Osti's uh, was very excited that we were there. Um, Oliver El Katip from oh, shit. fucking OVO fame, the brand general. director of OVO. Yo, we're gonna talk about the scooter. So, because that was before lunch. Oh, well, okay. You want we want to talk about riding a fucking scooter, dude? It is. So we were like pretty adamant. After, but we we're adamant. Like, there's all these like, little, like yeah, we're touring the archive, and whatever on video, but we're adamant. We're like, yo, we need a fucking little scoot, scoot. We need some bits because we need. It's like Jimmy and Larry learn how to be Italian. Yeah. Um, so they fucking source a scooter from two fucking dirtbag Bologna teens. <laughs> well, they're Giovanni's friends. Giovanni's friends with the guy that didn't own the scooter, but then he pulled up at the homie that had the scooter. He doesn't have a driver's license. Yeah, yeah, you thought this. Yeah, yeah. He's just illegally scooting <laughs> around, dude. Bologna. They live in Bologna, right? <laughs> yeah, they're Bolognese. They're local. The Bolognese sauce. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, so driving the scooter and you're <laughs> you are fucking shook it, bro. <laughs> We get on this scooter, so they give you, like, a. there's a broken uh, English language barrier tutorial on how to fucking No, use they the didn't scooter. give me one. They just, like, they're like, get on. I was like, yo, how do I go? Well, I thought he was explaining, like, the throttle you. So the whole reason. I, when I asked eventually, but right. he, like, he let me sit on and walked away. And I was we like, yo, how do I go? Originally, we didn't know this. You wanted a Vespa, right? Yeah. And they're like, yo, Vespas are manual transmission. Uh, do you think you can handle that? They're also very heavy. And you said, uh, absolutely not. So you got one of like the more like teen version of a scooter, which is what most people in Italy drive, most delivery guys, and that is automatic. And that's what uh, we immediately hopped on. And I and we didn't want to wear helmets because that whack. Lame. Right, exactly. No uh, helmets, no masks. You immediately fucking gun it. Uh, and I was truly, <laughs> and I'm on the back hanging out for dear life. <laughs> And I told you, I was, was like, like Yo, four miles an hour. Did you hear me scream? I said, it's too fast. Yeah. Slow down. Stop this. <laughs> um, but ultimately, you got the hang of it. And then it was pretty fun you to kind of like, scoot around. I think you said you're too confident. <laughs> yeah, you, you were ultimately too confident in your scooting. Uh, after the scooting, got lunch. It was hilarious. This is my thing. Once it became clear that GP was going to... Uh, and we're, by the way, we were saying cheap it's CP company, right. right? Just in case anyone is is uh, not catching that on or not catching on. Um, once they realized that lunch was on cheap they were fucking going crazy, the crew. Dude. Yeah, bro. Well, eating, they did. Like, you you said they were eating like they're in the army. Yeah, that's all. All film crews. It's like yo, eat when you can because you never know what you're gonna right. eat next. Uh, but dude, the boys were fucking balling out. Had a lot of wine. What did they do? They were just fucking ordering up, bro. We had a nice Lambrusco. Yeah. Um, I don't do we can we talk about like what we were actually doing, like more of the filming stuff, like basically going into the kitchen. We or? learned how to fucking cook from yeah. a from this insane Italian chef who was like truly out of his mind. He was like fucking the uh 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 law and order guy in wet hot American summer. Yes. Like the chef with like PTSD yes. that sees the talking can. Yeah. This guy was like we were <laughs> It was kind of annoying, not annoying. It was kind of frustrating because he could he didn't speak any English, he didn't speak any Italian. Right. And our camera guy, Marco, aka Carlo, was <laughs> supposed to interpret for yeah. us and our direct like, he's our director. Yeah, and from behind the camera, when the chef was done talking, he was gonna like tell us what we said, and then we respond and then he interprets for the chef. He wasn't interpreting anything, and I was kinda like, yo, like, what's going on here? And then afterwards he's like I could not understand <laughs> a single fucking thing this guy was saying. Not yeah. in terms of like he could understand the words, right? But the words in the order that he said them did <laughs> not like, make this sense. Guy made no fucking sense. Um, he was a fucking legend. Shout out Chef Massimo. We were at Trattoria della Santa, mm. della Santa here in Bologna. Yo, go there. Absolute fucking gas. What did we cook? We cooked uh, a milanese tagli- of tagli- veal. Tagli- was yeah. that pork or veal? Well, it was that was that was bone in pork. And that was a Milanese done Bolognese style, which is not only do you fucking have the fried cutlet, but then you go prosciutto and cheese and mozzarella and you cook it in cream and butter. And, and it was that bitch. out of control. Um, when I put on my Instagram stories, one guy summed it up the best where he goes, yo, I'm sure that was good, but it looks like there's just nut on this. It like <laughs> looked like a giant globular fucking piece of cum. Yeah, but it was um, fire. And then we made tag- great calm, great. Then we calm. made fresh pot. We made fresh tagliatelle, and uh, that the was ragu sauce. right. And that was done bolognese style, obviously. Um, that restaurant was absolutely fucking fantastic. We got our tortellini in brodo, the the tortori- tortellini in broth, mm. fucking absolutely smacked. If no you're, brodo, yeah. If you're if you're in uh, Bologna, you should absolutely go check that place out. It was fucking incredible. 
I love my sister, but shout out my brodo. Okay, there it is. Nice. All right, so then after that, we come fucking back to Milan. You and I hit a wine bar uh, that Giovanni's friend owns, and we proceeded to get smashed. My notes, well, from, my notes from dinner are uh, that we actually had a very productive drunk brainstorm for our, for our show that we're working on. Yeah. Where we kind of like... We, and someone Dinner was just light bites at the wine bar. Yeah, yeah, because we had at that point we had had. Well, I was hungry. You weren't like mo- well. Yeah, you ate a bunch, but f- I felt like I had two lunches because what we ate actually at lunch and then what we ate in the kitchen because like they were. It, it was very much like the Italian or really the grandmother thing where it's like he wasn't letting us not eat it. Like the we chef was to. just fucking vaping, and we're like, "Yo, yeah. what flavor is that? Parmesan?" And he's like, "No, uh, vanilla." <laughs> yeah. Um, also, you thought you learned an Italian phrase. Uh, mech, which yeah. you thought meant get out, uh, which just meant McDonald's. <laughs> and the guy was just screaming about McDonald's for some reason, <laughs> which he calls mech. The wine um, bar was gas. Yes. So the, the remix wine, which I had to go back last night and get a bottle of because mm-hmm. it was so fucking good. Yeah. Um, I don't know the name of the wine bar, but it's like one of the only natural wine bars in Milan. Yeah. Right. Not a ton of natural wine here, um, but this place. Uh, it starts with a P. Oh, yeah, what is it called? Fuck, I don't know. Benorama or some shit, I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's absolutely fucking gas. Um, And then the big realization that I had at a certain point when I went to use the bathroom is that my underwear had been on backwards the entire day, which (laughs) is insane that I hadn't noticed that because, like, I had pissed throughout the day, but... And I had... And the pants we were wearing, it wasn't like a button fly where you're, like, going to take your pants off or whatever, <laughs> pull your underwear down or whatever. I don't know how I didn't notice. But you're that, so shook on the scooter that it fucking turned your underwear no, inside honestly, out. <laughs> honestly, dude, maybe. <laughs> um, and then uh, things took a dark turn back here. We, we were playing a uh, homemade drinking game. That, right, Joe, let me hold it up. Yeah, I'm going to put a picture in the Zood board for anyone who's on the $10 tier. Um so it is a board, and you just um, we just figured that you just throw like bottle caps on this thing, like from far away, and then where it lands, you you do the thing. Why don't you read some of the? Uh, give me. Uh, hold on, where's my mic? All right, here's your mic. Yeah. Uh, give me ten push-ups, waterfall, dark hair drink, brown eyes drink, oldest drink, uh, Swedes drink, <laughs> Germans drink. Yeah. Drink water, which is nice. Shortest person drinks. Oh, bro, I think you're supposed to go in like this order. What do you mean? I think you're supposed to. It says start here, oh. and, then you, and then losers at the end drink. So whatever. Oh, so like, you like roll a dice and you move throughout the board. Okay, we've been playing it. We've been combining kind of like quarters yeah. and beer pong and this. Um, and because we're both American and because uh, we're both the same gender, uh, we have been playing. We've played this game twice now, uh, and it gets pretty competitive. Not Does like it? there's a winner. Bro, last night. You fucking assaulted me, dude. I almost had to kick you in the chest to get you to fucking leave me I alone. I, video, I, think I, I think I was, like, taking video. Yeah, Yo, you're um, fucking very violent. But uh, That night, though, I was not as wasted as you no. or that I was last right, night. Like, right, right, That night, you were the drunker of the two, and then last night, I was, like, right. on one. Uh, I was processing Dolph, bro. Yeah, that's My true. My current you were, fourth favorite rapper. You were, you were acting out. Uh, we also... Uh, did a little thing that we like to do in foreign countries where we get some fucking fun chips, the chips yeah. that aren't available, sucked. and they all sucked. Yeah. We fucking bricked it. Uh, Every single, f- it's too subtle, you know? Yeah. What did you get? You got I some. I got like tomato, basil, lays. Yeah. I got like, I just went for Ruffles ketchup. I'm like, oh, these are going to be good. They fucking suck. And then you got like what you, what looked like jalapeno, like Cheeto soccer oh, balls. Oh, those were, oh, right. I was so excited for those. Those were terrible. Yeah. Those were absolute, yeah. it's like a weird. You went on another beer run while I took my first poop. Which yes. I was constipated for a little bit. Now I can't stop. Yeah, we we have uh, we've been drinking a lot. I don't feel like we. Well, we actually do drink a lot of these trips. Yeah, they I actually, mean it's you know it's a working vacation. Yeah, you were. Uh, we have banned strip clubs are now no longer allowed to be on the itinerary. You were in rare form, <laughs> by which I mean your form, which again I'll do for the camera. Yeah, yeah. Where you're like, you're like shooting a free throw. You had like your feet together. Yeah. And you're like bending your knees. Yeah. And you're like in the corner. And I'm just like, yo, just fucking throw the quarter. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't. Again, I take it <laughs> fucking seriously, man. Yeah, you're. I mean, that's when you're doing that. I was like, oh shit, I think Lawrence is a lot when, drunker than maybe I when, thought when he was. You play, also, because you didn't eat dinner. Yeah, when you play, why some of your bites? When you play beer pong, do you have like uh, a routine like guys have before free throw? No, because it's I do. Stupid. So like, okay, okay. Right, never mind. So what's your routine? What's your beer pong? Uh, routine? it's a, it's and it's kind of like a not just a ritual, but more of like a lineup thing where it's one, two, three, and then like just a nice fucking beautiful. Arc we never played through. beer pong together. Have we never? I, I mean, don't think so. I don't really play. I, mean, I, I rinse and then I flick it off and then I'll just yes, like. Uh, yes, also. Yes. And I guess mm-hmm. I'm like aiming, but I'm not like 
you're not fucking doing spinning the, the ball and like you know like right, 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 lining no. up my elbow or anything. I like a, I like a, a, a big splash in the cup, and then I like to do the thing where you like you know flick your like Ali G. You flick your finger against it, and then you get the fucking residue off. Um, I never play beer pong. I love beer pong. I never really play it to be honest. Well, because you're a 34 year old man. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fair. I mean, <laughs> live with his wife. I mean, we're playing this whatever the fuck this thing is is even more fucking immature. Um, and then, yeah, I got so drunk that first night that, I, as I told you, I another thing with the underwear, I just <laughs> woke up in bed completely naked. At some point <laughs> during the night, I fucking had taken off my underwear and fucking th- <laughs> throw, threw them across the room. They were no, you're, bro, it was like uh, starting to see if they were cooked, you know, yeah. like spaghetti. You're throwing <laughs> them against the wall. For real, dude. Maybe you fucking um, beer pong them. Yo, the you throw your underwear against the wall and they stick, you got a fucking problem. You're done. You're yeah. done. Um, okay. Tuesday... Uh, we had a half day, right? So later we went, in the day, so I was I woke up fine. I slept until oh, like, I felt like yeah, I felt like absolute dog shit. Kind of like so late. If if you right? today, bro, we slept late. Two, yeah, we've slept in today and then uh, yeah, and on Tuesday for sure. I mean, normally you and I, I mean you get up hella early. Though I don't know if you're like up and about, but like because you've been like just chilling in bed probably. I would say it's not like you're sleeping till noon. Well, there's nothing to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Sure. What am I going to do? Go to the fucking... I guess I could go get coffee. Yeah. Um, anyway. Our big mission on Tuesday was... Um, oh, and I didn't know this, by the way, and I only am bringing this up because he just messaged us f- about the Merrill sale. Oh, by the way, if you're on Patreon, Todd Snyder private sale just went live. It is fucking good, bro. It Dude. has been up for 24 hours, and it'll be up for another 24 hours. Dude. And Saturday. You could tend Danner. Even, like, if you don't fuck with Todd Snyder, um, if it's not your steez, there's mad third-party brands, and a lot of them are also available for 25% off. Yeah. Uh, do not sleep just because uh, maybe you don't you don't fuck with uh, the Todd. Uh, but you do because you listen to the episode where he was on, and yeah, this is also it. public on YouTube. Fucking so. white chocolate. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, Buscemi had hit me or hit us on Patreon. I didn't realize he's a patron, but he hit us up on like Patreon. Us? Yeah, message Oh, he us. sent a bunch of recommendations. No, right, that's what I'm getting to. But he, okay. was, he was looking for white hydro mocks, uh, and I don't know how when he sent this message because that sale, that discount code is long gone. It was last week. It's cooked like your um, underwear. But the white hydro mocks, I told him, I'm like, yo, those are women's. That's why you can't find them. You got to fucking go to oh. the women's hydro mocks and just get them in your size. John. Uh, sa- next week's guest, John Buscemi. Oh, yeah. Next. Yes. There you go. Well, let's not barely leave. Next week's guest, John Last Buscemi. of the L.A. greats. Yes. Maddie, Benny, Johnny. Yep. Uh, he sent us a recommendation for what he said was the oldest sandwich okay, shop okay. in Europe. All right, so he sent me. So he was DMing with me on Monday night when we were twisted, and I was like doing like Italian spelled out words. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, "Who is the consigliere <laughs> or the concierge?" And he's like, "What are you talking about? This is the concierge at your hotel." <laughs> so, John, to show me my apologies. Um, I'm sure you're just fucking smoking a big fat cigar in your Bentley. But um, so he sent me a long list, and I think what happened was it must have gotten like while copying and pasting it from his notes app or from like a previous text. Mm-hmm. I think that the text got like jumbled up a little bit. Oh. I think that has to be what happened because like there's no way he fucked this up because everything else that he's written out that I've been looking up like checks out. Right. Um. So yeah, that's just one a little caveat before we proceed. Yeah. Uh, we <laughs> walked halfway across the fucking city. Uh, to the sandwich place, and we show up, and we're just like, well, well, and okay, for the sandwich shop, he had said that it is the oldest sandwich shop in Europe, and you remember that he had talked about it on the pod. Yes, right, shrimp and cream cheese. That's yeah. what he he had mentioned about. So we're like, right. <coughs> which sounds gross, but makes sense, right? Shrimp right. and cream cheese. And the whole thing was there's like 300 sandwiches on the menu, uh, very little variation in all of these, but but they're all special and unique. And if it's the oldest place, you and I, you know, Gotta we're go. fucking we're on our fucking fake foodie shit. Uh, but we show up to this place. Uh, that was absolutely not the right place. It was like a clean, modern sandwich like shop where like you probably pop, right. it's, it looks like like a like you belong like Midtown. Yeah. You know? uh, and listen, there was a decent sized lunch crowd there, and we ultimately <laughs> uh, got sandwiches there because we're like, I don't know what the fuck John was talking about, but we I was like, we, we get it. I was there. like, is this the oldest? Does this date back to like the twelve hundred? And it said basically it was like serving s- panini since nineteen sixty four. I'm like, there's no. <laughs> That. <laughs> I was like, wait, was Milan like bombed in World War yeah, II? Right. And this is like, is it the actual <laughs> this is the oldest sandwich shop in Milan? They had to do a, a fucking uh, hard restart in the, <laughs> the, the the World War II bombings of 1964 yeah. based on your fucking historical was Milan context. In Vietnam? Um, so we we did that, uh, and then basically just came. Then fucking wait, 
You're forgetting about the bathroom. Oh, my God. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the bathroom. This was insane. So <laughs> we go to leave, and I go to use the bathroom, and the door is ajar. So I just go to open it. So I absolutely fucking open the door on an old man taking a piss, at which point. Was his underwear on correctly? Uh, I didn't look. At How's the fit? I, I didn't. I, I how's, was, his, how's his cock? Once I saw a shape, once I just saw like the, the silhouette, the shape, I immediately like closed it. He freaked out a little bit, but then I hear him fucking with the latch, and then I think he actually properly locked it. Okay. Um, and then I'm waiting and I'm waiting, and he's struggling with the lock to get out, um, and then ultimately uh, is stuck in the bathroom. He has locked himself in. Okay. Let me just give you my POV from here, because yeah. I'm just like at the table. Like I paid. I'm just waiting. I'm on my phone, whatever. Um. <laughs> And you come out, and there's like eight people in this like yeah. pretty small space, uh-huh. and you're just like, "Hey, I think some guy locked himself in the bathroom." <laughs> and if that was me, I'd be so fucking mortified. Like, I would have preferred if you, if that was me, if you'd gone up to the guy and be like, "Hey, I think uh, some guy." Like, well, the, the reason I said that is because first I tried. <laughs> but to he was ha- knocking but his I, fucking well, ass off before that because I tried to help him on from my side, and uh, it was locked, so I couldn't do anything. So he's just fucking. <laughs> <wailing>. <laughs> So at that point, I'm like, yo, are people going to like look at me? And then I panicked and I fucking screamed. And screamed and the ran. best is that the fucking, the, the host, uh, the guy who, was, or was, I don't know, what was he? The fucking cashier, he's the host. The he captain. Was, yeah, the captain, the consigliere, yeah. the concierge. <laughs> he fucking goes, he can't open the door either. So he had to get like some fucking machinery, like a, you, he had to get like a, not like a screwdriver or a wrench, but some fucking thing to like basically take the, Lock, lock off out? the outside, but oh, it was shit. a simple only. Like, it wasn't like he had to unscrew all these screws. It was like a two piece like mechanism. It, it seemed like um, mortifying. Yeah, ultimately I was like, you know, what? I'm not going to use the bathroom. Let's yeah. bounce. Can you imagine more mortifying? Let's say uh, I didn't open on that guy, so he pees, he leaves. Um, I'm not an old Italian moron, so I go in there. <laughs> I'm going to lock it. What if I was the one who got locked in the bathroom? Then I'd scream, "Hey!" Uh! <laughs> My work husband's fucking... He's fucking stuck in here. He's taking a shit. I'm fucking stuck in the bathroom all here. So anyway. Doing a doki. Were you pooping? No, you I was poop? No, I was going to pee. And then at that okay. point, I'm like, I'm not using this bathroom. Is a yeah, fucking, this bathroom's cursed. It's a fucking cursed death trap. I'm out of here. Um, but uh, so ultimately, yeah, you might have been embarrassed uh, for me, for both of us. But yo, it could have absolutely been worse. Oh, of course. Oh, here we go. Oh, what the fuck we is this? We lost the video. All right, but maybe iPhone we can... iPhone storage full. Oh, that's why... Damn, bro. All right, so yeah, guys. We, obviously, if you if you watch the videos, you see we you've seen we've had some technical difficulties, uh, and it seems like we just got down to the bottom of them. So, all right, well, fifty two. <sighs> apologies. Did it last? Do you think we got an hour in? I don't know. Well, we'll keep unclear. going on audio. Yeah. Um. So sorry about that. We also bought a new camera, but we're saving it for a, a core four reunion. Well, we just don't know how to do it yet. Yeah, and we haven't uh, opened it uh, and taken it out of the box. All right, keep it going. Um, keep so, it going. so after our fucking adventures at the the not not the oldest uh, <laughs> panini shop in the fucking world. Again, we but we don't know. If it is or not. No, dude, that was, it's the wrong, we went to the wrong place. There's, <laughs> there's a 0% chance that was the recommendation. Um, we ultimately chilled that afternoon and then went and had this very big fine dining experience. So this is something we can't, and we can't necessarily mention the name we, we of. Can't, we can't spoil this um, because uh, there are, this has to do with like a whole fucking rollout for cheap pee that we're not involved with. But we what, do, while having a great and having a great experience, uh, ultimately overall, and meeting the fucking most hilarious yeah. fucking chef of all time, so I guess Fernandino, like, yeah, Fernan, Fern, Ferdinando, Ferdinando. I guess Bo- I can't get anyone. Bologna name, right? is kind of like more casual, yes. more like working class. Right. Milano is like fancier, and I so end. we had to do like the fine dining experience, right? Yeah. So we went to a probably like. I don't know, fucking four or five star restaurant, like probably very expensive. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to see the menu. We went during off hours because again, everything's closed between like three and se- three and eight. Yeah. Um, and we just get fucking served by Chef Ferdinando mm-hmm. from the manager Matteo. Um, Talk about the he walks us through the dishes, walks through the dishes. We which taste were, everything. We banter, and this was like this was us on our food show shit. Yeah, right. Like there were like food porn shots, video of us just like eating, mm-hmm. <laughs> which yeah. is. Uh, yo. I'm actually pretty nervous about that. I'm, I'm not a. I've been on TV eating before. Did you ever see me? I, or have we talked about when I was on when Trunzo was on the Bravo show, the Singles Project? Yeah, yeah. Isn't the back of your head? It's just the back. No, of your head, I'm, right? it's, it was a. We went to. Uh, it was like a birthday party. They like reverse engineered this birthday party because it's like reality TV. Nothing's actually like. What? Well, it's not totally real. What? Um, 
Yeah, right. <laughs> Santa's not real. That's your version of Santa's not real. It's that reality <laughs> show is fucking. Pro- Tom and Tom are aren't besties. Um, and uh, there's a shot of me eating like a kale Caesar, and I was shit faced at this dinner. Um, but I'm just like I ordered a kale Caesar, but it, but it's no, it was like for it was like a, for the table, you know, it was like mm-hmm. a you know type mm-hmm. of thing. I didn't order it. Um, Damn, I'll kill and I'm just like, kale Caesar and right I now. wish the video still works. Sorry guys, but like I'm eating it, I look like a fucking monster. You are a very fast eater. Yes. We've established that. Mm-hmm. And me too, you though. Love I am. You love slurping everything down to the very last drop. Oh, uh, what is it called? What do they call it when you dip the bread in the Scarpetta. sauce? Scarpetta. Scarpetta. Uh, we were little boot. Did you know? Did you see that we were kind of chastised for doing that at the fine dining place? Yeah. The guy was like, "The guy was like, don't let chef see you do that." Oh, right, because you're nuts. Yeah. You lo- okay? But I just, if you like it, it should be a compliment. You uh, like it so much, I guess. But, but like, we're uncouth. not fine. We're like, not fine fucking... dining guys. No, not at all. But at least I can like code switch or try to code switch a little bit. You are just like you're your own true self. Yeah, I'm. And that's a, admirable. I'm. A, there's this Kanye quote floating around where, he, uh, or it's like on Zood boards, and it's like uh, he's like, I love when people like are the maximum. Some like I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, some their people are the maximum version of their character. Like you just you know like you're being your truest self, and I guess. Kanye and I have that in common, though I'm not a Gemini. I knew that you <laughs> will never, um, when you get a wine taste, you always slug back the whole thing. Well, yeah, well, I, why not? Well, I knew that, right? Take a, you're supposed to take a, just a sip? Well, the, uh, I, it's, okay, I don't think you're supposed to, like, just fucking chug it. I think, yeah, you're supposed to, like, have a, a little sip. Whatever, that's totally fine. Yeah. A new Larry move that I've learned, and I, <laughs> learned, about, I learned something new about you every day. <laughs> like, you have the fucking Supreme app on your phone, you <laughs> fucking <laughs> child. <laughs> Can't wear your Whatever, underwear. Whatever, bro. Okay, you can't wear your underwear right. <laughs> <laughs> You're spilling food and wa- drink on the airplane, yeah. and you have the Supreme Mouth on your phone. You are 11 years old. I would just like to say real quick, I come off very bad, I think, uh, especially on the pod and stuff when we travel together because we have all these horse toys. None of these things come from also a place of rudeness, really. I just fucking am oblivious. What you do anything. is, okay, this is the move, okay. is that uh, you sip a coffee, or we drink a cafe, mm-hmm. right? Espresso, there's like a little froth at the bottom. You oh, put- another thing, Italian, best coffee, too. Yeah. Oh, love it. Although I would love, I do like the quantity of like a giant coffee. You could get, well, we, you be getting multiple coffees. Well, I got, you, you go yeah. dopio and you did times two. I right? did dopio, dopio. Yeah. You pour water into the bottom of the espresso cup and then slurp it back. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> that's <laughs> a fuck, bro. Yeah. I don't know. Also, and, you and, go, and, and you Giovanni go fully, was, you go fully vertical <laughs> as well. Uh, and Giovanni was you telling us that send like, it, bro. he's saying that's a faux pas too. Like no one, you should never. Well, there's a lot of Kofi faux pas here, right? You ca- if you get a cappuccino anytime like afternoon, you're a fucking bozo. That's yeah. only in America you would have a cappuccino for dessert. Um, and uh, that's one. And then uh, and I kind of knew that because I learned that going to the Pity Womo. That was a thing that was mentioned to us. But uh, he was saying, and I think this is maybe more of like a personal thing, though. He was kind of throwing it down like a hard and fast rule was that uh, if you want to drink water like after your meal, make sure you do that. Because once you have the coffee, you're not supposed to then drink water after. That's insane. Which is, I guess, extra bad than them putting it in the coffee cup, yeah. swirling it around, getting the last drops. I think there's also something that has to do with milk. Mm-hmm. Like you're not supposed to have a milk in your coffee like a macchiato um it's either one or the other like you're you're not supposed to have it before dinner or you're not supposed to have it after dinner yeah. the reason i do that water thing all right here's where it's from okay is uh when i make an espresso I, I i have an espresso machine and every morning i make myself espresso in the espresso and it got to a point where jenna uh was like just me kind of i guess being like a, a sloppy guy like not cleaning and i'll put the cup like just back like you know i'll use a coffee cup for like a week which i guess is kind of gross but i do like, that right and i'm just trying to not have to fucking do dishes and shit um, or like the dishwasher gets loaded up too fast uh, so I, she was uh, already complaining about me being gross that way but then like leaving like kind of messy residue so then I would start cleaning it out and then I'd be like well there's kind of like more coffee in here <laughs> so it's really more of just being like a cheap bastard <laughs> cheap Jew than anything you know it's like, like nothing going to waste it's like I s- drink and eat like I'm in the army bro it's like taking a paperclip and like scraping the, the fucking dregs of your pipe and be like it still hits bro yeah <laughs> the fucking, I'm, I'm smoking resin every morning <laughs> dude basically um, so the big question here is uh, and I'll let you pontificate on this oh you were gonna say something oh I guess it was just me here's the coffee here's yeah. the coffee move um, why don't you pontificate on would shooting a food travel show actually suck now that we did it for one night and uh. we got to see what it's like well this was weird because it was like sitting down being served course by course and in between the chef coming out, it's just us fucking chewing yeah. and us waiting for the next course. And then he would come out and we'd banter. I did. We did fuck up by not sharing course one with the, with the crew. Right. 
Uh, I'm starting with the pasta. Well, that was just an amuse bouche. Right? Yeah, that would didn't seem like a share. That was just a, a shareable bite. thing. And yeah. then tuna. There was a little tuna. My bushi was a moozy. Yeah. Um, but sharing with the crew felt nice, even though it was probably might have been a little weird. They were like, starving, and it was the right thing to do, I think. But it was also a little like, okay, we're done. You guys eat now. But yeah. like, like, I guess I don't know. What, what would Bourdain do? It kind it kind of felt like benevolent overlord shit, which like I could be loaded to some degree. They ultimately seemed very hungry. We were we were the only ones eating, so I think that was the move. But yeah, I was just very slow. It's not yeah, because because yeah, they were cooking not, it dish by dish. Yeah, it's uh, it's something that I think when you watch oh, there's it, a soup. No, that was yesterday. No, no that was yesterday. I Good think soup. It's I think it's a thing that when you watch, it, and I don't know if this is how all like food shows are, but anything that in that kind of format or they are filming at a restaurant with a chef and it's going course by course, like what you're watching on TV, you're like, damn, what a fucking fun ass job. But then you're there in the moment and it's fucking a slog, dude, and well, it's it's you're not like, really enjoying it. It's more like how many times do you be like. You take a bite and you're like, oh my god, yeah. this is just an explosion of flavors in my fucking mouth. Yeah, I guess. I guess there's that too. We're not, ex- and also we're not pros. Or obviously, it's the not first yet. time we've really done this. Um, hey, Jimmy and Larry take over Italy. I'm excited yeah. for this shit. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess uh, the only other thing that happened on Tuesday is uh, we went to a pizza spot that was recommended to us, and when the guy by Enrico, f- by Enrico and when the guy found out we are from New York, we got like instant clout. And yeah. This guy was like. He's like showing us around the restaurant, oh and and this what was sick about the restaurant was these, uh, what would you even call? It was like it's not art, it's like dire giant dioramas. Yeah, they're yeah, like exactly. it was like scary. <laughs> yeah, there it was. He had a fucking one room was also it's a it's a he's from Naples, uh, and it's obviously Neapolitan. Really. It's it's a Neapolitan pizza place, but he had fucking Maradona with like the Europa cup three like three quarters. Like, it's like a th- three-quarters bear brick. Like, it's not fully human size, but it's, like, <laughs> fucking suspended from a fake balcony that was built into the restaurant. And he's, like, fucking holding up a trophy. And there's a woman, like, doing her laundry next to him. It was, like, a whole street scene. Another room was a Mount Vesuvius-themed yeah. room. It's like, fake grapes hanging from the ceiling. Fake grapes and a fucking... Great beer made with sea salt. Oh, yeah. What is it called? Messina. Messina. Oh, yeah, my Messina. God, bro. Yo, shout out fucking... Shout out all the, the Neapolitan homies. Love your pizza. Love your fucking beer. Uh, so what was the name? What was the name of that spot? You remember? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it fucking rocked. Okay, so that was Tuesday. On to Wednesday here, and we're half. Were we halfway through this trip? Or we're more than halfway now. Me, well, right today, and uh, as we record, I mean, we have dinner tonight, and then a full day of filming, and then you fly home, and then I have a few days in right. Milano and with my girlfriend. Right, and then you have your little romantic trip. Anyway, so okay, so now we're on to Wednesday. Uh, the big drama that morning was uh, we. We both had a CP Company Barber, which is a collab that they did for the 50th anniversary, and we both wanted to wear it, and we both wanted fit pics taken of each other, so it was a little bit of an unstoppable force versus an immovable object. Can because you, okay, let me just correct yeah. you there. It wasn't about wanting a fit pic. It's that it was the perfect weight jacket for the weather, Okay, and if I were to change jackets, it meant I wasn't going to wear... The only other jacket that would have worked for that weather was like a military green versus this kind of like pistachio green sweater that I had underneath. Gotcha. So I'd have to change the sweater. Oh, it would have been a whole thing. And the only other sweater I have is like much heavier. Yeah. So then I have to change into the Arcteryx jacket because that's a shell. But it was hot out. It was mm. like sunny out. It's like, why am I wearing an Arc jacket in the sun? So that was my thinking there. I wasn't necessarily wanting fit picks. I guess that shows the difference between us because as much as I do dress for the weather, I brought that jacket being like, I'm going to wear this in a fucking fit pick. Not like this is the perfect jacket for you. All- scan the world with a fit pick lens <laughs> over your baby blues. Yeah, <laughs> where uh, even on Tuesday after we went to the oldest sandwich shop in Europe, you're like, I'm like, yo, I think we should go home because we don't have that much time before. Also, you were like, I need to take it up. I'm hungover, so it's like, all right, well, we don't have much time before we have to go shoot at the fine dining restaurant. Yeah, and you're like, well, where's Il Duomo? Is it right here? Let's take a quick fit pick. I'm like, no, it's like a 25 minute walk from here. <laughs> I mean, oh, and guess what? Ultimately. Both got flicked up. We both walked around all day looking cute as shit in our fucking matching jackets, uh, which is something that clearly I think would bother you more than me. I didn't really care at all. And then we found out later that we both got uh, the same jacket from another brand as well. Yeah. <laughs> which was like fucking. Uh, like we both, we each separately independently requested, requested it versus yeah. like, you know, the CP Barber was, was a gift we, we bo- from CP. We, we both knew that we were going to get that. shit out of that. 
Yeah. It's uh, very Han Solo, very... Uh, I it's thought awesome. It was, I thought it was very, like, Ridley Scott alien. You've never owned a barber, so you don't even... You know, obviously, I talk about my Supreme Barber all the time. I've owned um, barbers in the past. I've worn barbers in college. Like, they're great, dude. They're really... Yeah, the, it's they're, like the perfect fall jacket. But they're usually more streamlined. This is, like, oh, three, yeah. this is like boxy and, like, cropped and has, like, yeah. crazy, the, like, 3D pockets The fit on is shit. really cool, and I don't know if you could still buy them on the barber site. They're pretty expensive. I think they're, like, $900. Um, there's two styles. I think we have, we, we have the short one. Uh, no. No, okay. I don't know. Not at all. I think it's because of all those bells and whistles. Right. Like the Supreme Barber, which was even more expensive. Well, barbers are not cheap. No, that yeah, that might have been closer to five. But anyway. Well, you know, you bought it. Um, yeah. cool you bought. <laughs> but I forget. Uh, another thing in terms of argument was was uh, the framing of fit picks. Oh. Where you, where you this is thought that perfect. you had to fucking explain some art 101 shit to me about the rule of thirds. The rule of like, thirds, bro. I was just. It's literally where we had dinner with Jonah Weiner. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> but my, okay, my point is was and and ultimately I took your advice and I think I'm happy I did. Uh it's tough when the background for us il, the well it's not il duomo. It is it is a it is it is and duomo, and duomo uh, which we found out means cathedral not dome. <laughs> <laughs> learning learning a lot on this trip. My thing is that it's so far recessed from where that gate was where you could yeah. go that like it ultimately probably wasn't yeah it's hot as fucking here. Um it probably nothing about Italy. It's mad hot everywhere. Yeah. Well, not everywhere. It was fucking steaming in Slam Jam. That that was shout out fucking Slam Jam. I guess we'll talk about that in a sec because that that happened on Wednesday as well. But um, or did it? No, that was that was, was Wednesday. That, yeah, that was on Wednesday. Okay. Um. Anyway, my thing is that I want to be in the center of the frame. Uh, I want to be you know fucking centered when you're looking at my grid, not cut off at the knees. Whereas. Well, I, okay, so I was taking photos That's of you, and I, I was taking photos of you, and I was angling in a way where I was getting the top spires of the of the Duomo, mm-hmm. and kind of like starting at your feet, yeah. right. So if you were to post it, it would be like you're like standing at the very bottom of the photo, and you have the whole context of where we are, this very beautiful church and architecture behind you, and you're still centered, but you're like not um, vertically centered, you're horizontally centered. Okay, interesting. Right? And you do get the whole fit, but you get like. A vibe and a context in like an, a more interesting photo than just like you know Lawrence head to toe. Right. I then get what you're saying. You asked me to just get closer, or whatever. And then you end up taking a bunch of photos of me. Not that many because I get really embarrassed posing. Yeah, in front of that's shit. right. Like I'll I will, will I was I did it for the length of an entire cigarette, which for me as a as a uh, dart blaster extraordinaire, a chain smoker, it didn't last long. But for you, I think I might have took six picks before you were just you were uh, ashamed. You were putting, you were bringing shame on your family. You yeah. were like, well, you can't without do a it. sig, it's hard with no props because you had to like do shit with your hands. Bro, you were fucking doing a bunch of fucking religious shit too that ultimately didn't get used. A bunch of Lucy's, but but you for were that posing. you were post, you're you're you had me in the center, which meant that there was a, just a shitty gray wet street in front of me. Yeah, you couldn't really, get, you didn't have that much Duomo, which is fine. I made it work. Um, cracked three k likes. Earlier today, congratulations. That's fantastic. That's, uh, Does that mean that's that's real good, right? It's pretty good, I think. Okay, yeah. It's pretty. It's a higher percentage of likes to followers than you. Oh, my engagement is going down. I need. Yeah, if you're listening right now, show me some love. Man. Which, by what the way, the fuck, you are now. Guys? How's it feel to be number two? Oh, that's right. Yo, congratulations <laughs> to at throwing fits. Well, oh, did it did it pass me? It's going to. It's absolutely so. going to. Um, my the thing with the and and listen, man. Of course, I want to. You know, I'm out here always begging you to take fit pics of me when we're on vacation. Of course, I want to reciprocate the favor and well, this do a is good just, job. This was so tough because we were so far from what we wanted the background to be that it was very difficult to to get a a actual picture that shows your outfit and then also clearly shows. I think the Duomo. this this that's my final this point. This indicates that just the duality of man between Jimmy and Larry, where it's like Larry, yeah, center attention, center focus, you. With James, the fit, the fit. I'm taking photos, and it's like the vibe, the macro, the context, the whole story. Well, speaking of the, the vision, speaking of the second slide uh, in your slideshow, we oh, went yeah. to Slam Jam. Yeah, you did a little shopping. We immediately got recognized by the staff. Shout out Jack. Literally, as, as we walked the in, the second door. we walked in, which was awesome because obviously Slam Jam is the fucking coolest, best store in Milan. And then, uh, and I forget your name. I don't know if you're a patron, but uh, the Irish homie, Patrick, probably. who was yeah, <laughs> Patrick O'Sullivan, uh, who is in town with he's his probably, girl, he's probably drunk, just just for a couple days, probably uh, angry, and and also recognized us and, and had a lot of kind words to say. Uh, Slam Jam fucking rocks. Yeah. Great fucking, great brands, great good penis, sneakers. Great penis sculpture. They got the fucking penis uh, chair from uh, A Clockwork Orange, which was awesome to see in person. Yeah. Just a little fucking Rode that showed. shit like a fucking cowboy. What did you buy? You bought a Gramici bucket I bought hat. a Gramici 
it's not not really a bucket. It's like a you call it a rain hat. It's like a big like sun hat. Uh, a uh, a boonie hat. What the fuck you call me? Yeah, uh, something like that. I think is what the term. It's like uh, sure. It's like what well, would you would wear fishing or something? But yeah, it go look at it on my IG. <laughs> I'm riding a giant white penis while wearing it. Um, <laughs> Uh, I also found out after we went to Slam, well, after we went to Slam Jam, we had a cocktail um, at the bar where their Richard uh, Richard Cheese Richard Cheese was playing. I found out that, and and this is an interesting development in that uh, r- the last time you came over, which was to shoot the Merrill picks, yeah, I felt like you and JB were like growing down in a weird way. Where like I oh, kind we of do that. I kind of yeah okay. How about whenever you hang out there, you guys bro down. And I feel like I get left out, and then I'm also like the butt <laughs> of the, every fucking joke, which like obviously doesn't bode well for the podcast. <laughs> but I found out that coming soon. But you told me that you had surreptitiously taken a picture of me on my phone at dinner and like send it to JB, and you guys would be like, oh, see what we got to fucking deal with, or like whatever. Like I'm not happy about that. Yeah, you're on your phone a lot. Oh, so are you. So yeah, is every, so, is, so is everybody. I have noticed this. At dinner, and this is why Italians are like, they, they treat their food and their meals seriously. I do not see a lot of Italians on their phones. They love converse, conversating. Touche. Right? And I don't know if this is rude or not, but I've seen no one is wearing a hat when they're sitting down at the table. Like, I, don't, I don't know if they take they it off. They doff their cap. I don't know if they take it off or if they're not wearing it like into the restaurant. To at all? With. Like yeah. before they enter the doorway. Interesting. Yeah. I haven't noticed that. So, two things to notice. Another thing I noticed is that people don't smoke cigarettes walking down the street. Eh, they, that's not. I mean, this is the same. We talked about this in London. I don't think. I think that's a European thing. I think there's like desi- there's like spots where people stand and smoke. And then they like, there's like little uh, trash can, like ashtray trash cans, whatever, where they dump out their butt. I've seen a lot of people smoking, and we've seen a ton of dogs. That's what I've noticed. Okay. Um, and then uh, a ton of people smoking, but I think they're just standing there. Yeah, that's what I've seen. And then speaking of JB, you also uh, randomly had an aside that I thought was funny that maybe we could talk about, where you were like, I forget how this got brought up, but at a certain point you go, "Oh yeah, bro." Um, I think it was because of the lounge music that was playing. We were just like talking about Sinatra and that, but you were like, "Yeah, bro, I need some tips on how to be romantic now that you have a girlfriend." You remember asking me that? Not how some romantic shit to do in New York there when she go. comes that's, to New York. That's what it is. And I was like, I'm the wrong fucking guy to ask. I'm the worst at that. So I did give you one recommendation that I thought that was I'm not going to take. That you were like, this shit sucks, bro. <laughs> well, you're like, I love it there because I get smashed off the rum punch. <laughs> Yo, how romantic. And I could smoke a fat gorilla dick cigar. I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> okay, well, when you put it that way. Um, but uh, th- uh, we're talking about the Carnegie Club, if anyone. If uh, that sounds romantic. Fucking Romeo to, over to, here. To anyone listening. Um. Our dinner, la- this is last night, Wednesday, uh, continuing with the day, uh, that's when we overate. <laughs> that's where we so had good, the pasta course, not as the fucking, fu- well, that Florentine steak for two. I mean, mm. Florentine porthouse. Did a lot of people, you put a picture on Instagram, right? Yeah. Did a lot of people hit you up being like, yo, that's raw? No. I, go- I got a lot of reactions to it. Um, and I got some reactions to you fucking jazzing oh, yeah. out jazz hands larry yeah. to dick cheese someone's yeah. like yo richard cheese classic <laughs> oh people so I, i'm not familiar with this guy's oeuvre uh i guess he just you, does like dumb covers in yeah. like a lounge style yeah it kind of reminds me of like i uh, recognize his name when i when i shazam to him I recognize yeah yeah, yeah, this yeah. Shit. You, you recognize it reminds me of like it's like a novel well obviously it's a novelty thing his name is fucking dick cheese it reminds me of like the band that's in Step Brothers and in wedding crashers where it's right. like i need you fucking now tonight yeah anyway um, I mean, great song. Yeah, great fucking song. Total Eclipse of the Heart. Um, but Dolph has Turn to be, around. But Dolph has to be your outro music. Yo, and that's another thing. At dinner, uh, oh, in between crazy. courses, we found out about Dolph. Super fucking. I fucking. came back from the bathroom and you're like, Dolph died. And I'm just like, what? Yeah, fucking crazy. Call way off guard. Yeah. Um, in terms of, we could talk Dolph real quick. You are a huge fucking fan. Him and Key Glock right, right now. I mean, they have a few albums together. I guess Dolph signed Key Glock and then, mm-hmm. I don't know, like. Definitely put Key Glock on, I feel like. Yeah, and then. Um, I don't know, just Memphis, yeah. but uh, yeah. All right, I mean, they're two. Memphis legend. They're two. They've uh, albums, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. two of them. Yeah. Um, Yell tapes two just came out. That has a bunch of Dolph on it. Uh, it's a Key Glock album. But yeah, right now it's all my fucking jits from the Panhandle in Miami, and then like Memphis. That's Damn. just what I listen to. Uh, I obviously was familiar with uh, it's Dolph yeah. and um, a dude that I always just was like, this guy is hilarious. He's just like fucking. Fucking funny as shit, um, whether it be bars. Frazier put a great bar on Twitter where he's like, um, my bitch like to argue, my bitch like to argue, so I sent her to law school <laughs> or like whatever the fuck. Um 
Yeah, dude. Uh, damn. R.I.P. to a fucking legend. If you're not familiar with Dolph, fucking give his family, hopefully, or his estate, some I fucking think streams. We'll put the outro music as Cam, Dolph. And- Cam Hicks chose him as his outro music. I chose it as my outro music when I was on How Long Gone. Oh, shit. Um, I don't know what song they played because I didn't listen. But, <laughs> um, well, I don't want to hear my own voice. Yeah. Not for any other reason. And, yeah. All right, big rip. Big, big rip. rip. Fucking massive rip. Uh, yeah, so to the steak, I was getting two types of reaction. Like, fire reactions from people, obviously, with good taste, and then people doing the ultimate, most baby reaction possible, uh, including a friend of ours who I will not name, because to me, any time that someone's Wait, like... Say, say it off mic. Say it off mic. What? Oh. Well, did that pick up on... <laughs> I don't know if that picked up. But anyway, uh, it's like, be grow up. That's how a steak... First of all, it's... The plate, the it hot was, plate is like cooking it on the other side. Yeah, if you flipped it over, yeah. it was like, it wasn't seared, but Bro. it was like brown. Yeah. Like the color of this couch, like oatmeal on the other side. I know we're not in fucking Firenze, but like you think that we're going to go to a restaurant in, in, in fucking Italy, right? And we're going to get a, a, a Florentine porterhouse, and you're going to tell me that you don't think they know how to cook it? Like they don't even ask you how you want it The done. name of the restaurant is Osteria Bisteca. Yeah. I like, think that means beefsteak. Yeah, we didn't like say, oh, hey, I don't know what Osteria means. hey, can we get a rare? That's just how it served, and it fucking slapped uh, to the point where we absolutely fucking overate. Um, Have you been, oh, let me ask you this, because yeah. uh, just the word rare. Have you been um, li- re-listening to Live Love ASAP? Or Live Love ASAP, right? Now that's I didn't really give a fuck on. about the 10-year anniversary. Uh, but we now that's on streaming. Last, now li- that's on streaming. I know, we listened to it last night when yeah. we were getting fucking drunk. Eh, I like bass. Bass is my shit. Palace. Um, well, I've just been like it's so. Uh, we've been saying swagu. Yes. Like I don't know. It's just That's so funny. Like thing, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Sure. But, but just like fuck swag. Yeah. Fuck yeah. swag. Swag. Uh, um. Whatever. Just been fucking yeah. all those um all that slang from ten years ago has been like popping back up in my head. Yeah. Rare. And he, and he like performed in like an old fit from t- like he like re-engineered one of those old fits at Complex Con, right? He wore like the it was og or whatever, scale. but it was supposed to be like Pyrex C. Well, the, the, flannel. the flannel, but then he wore like I think he wore a black scale hat. Yo, we saw Calm the Fuck Down Billboard. Oh, that right. honestly has gotten the mo- most reactions yeah, 100%. of uh anything that I've posted on my story. Where we can't, like, what the fuck? We can't figure out though if it's a brand called Calm the Fuck Down or if it's a billboard for Sir, right? That's the one. I think that's know, unclear bro. in terms of like what is the entity that has survived to 2021. If we had Wi-Fi, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, one more note about dinner. I saw what I believe to be the most unhinged fit that we've seen in Italy, um, which was a Asian guy who I heard speak. Well, I said a lot of Asian hate. A lot of Asian hate. No, I'm, over on the side. I, I, I'm just. Dis- I'm not, really. That's how it comes off. <laughs> I did well, normally say, call I them, did say normally call them foreign exchange students. <laughs> I, I did say to you, I was like, "Oh, yeah, I heard him speaking Chinese," and you were like, "Chinese is not a language." Yeah, <laughs> I was just well, fuck with you. I fucked up. Um, what was it? Cantonese or Mandarin? Right. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this guy. Let me describe his fit. He had sand suede Chelsea boots on with fear of God track pants, like fucking zip, uh, like zipped at the 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 cuff to be like bell bottomy. Did he with, zipper? Did he zipper the cuff into the? Chelsea no, they zip? were like over it. Okay. They were over it, which I guess is if you're gonna if they were skinnied and tucked in, it would be even worse. But this yeah. is still pretty bad. And then he was wearing a like super all over print graphic tee, and then had a Tom Brown cardigan over it. It's the worst outfit I've seen. Was the there a Mickey Mouse trip. on the back of the cardigan? No, it would, but it's some. It was some. It might have been. It wasn't a dolphin. I'm just thinking of Dolph. I. There I was, it might have been a dolphin. I think it was a dolphin. <laughs> oh wait, was it? Yo, if there is a Tom Brown cardigan. With Asian the dolphin, young, Asian young <laughs> dolphin, Milano, bro. Yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my Googles when I get back on the Wi-Fi, and uh, that would be <laughs> that fit was so bad it killed Dolph, Yo, dude. That'd be hard. <laughs> if it is that hard. <laughs> well, if anything, it was a fuck a tribute to our fucking uh, fallen, fallen brethren for our fallen fucking brethren. Again, went sh- back to the wine box. It was so good because also I had to cop a bottle. Sorry, we're, we're running driving. up on time. One, just an, another prompt. You you brought this up. I don't have an answer. Are we food Instagram posers when we go on our trips? And we just, you and I take pictures of food. Everyone does, but we go hard as fuck. Yeah. And our, well, does that make us lame? Okay. Every meal is a fucking movie, right? Facts. Every meal is is a chef starring um, what's it got? John whatever, John Favreau, John Favreau <laughs> right? Every fucking we're on our Maddie Maps and shit. So like every meal is special. Like where there's no regular degular meals. Mm-hmm. Um, even like. We just wanted to get a regular lunch today. It was a fucking like yeah. the most olive ass sandwich we ever had. Yeah, it wasn't really good though. The reviews that you uh, that you showed me were fucking fire, and the name was so good. Panini Teca. Pa- 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 
Panini Teca. <laughs> no, pan- Panino. Panino, Panino Teca. Panino Teca. Yeah. Um, anyway. So there's that, but also, like, there's not much to do here, and that's probably on us, and also, like, you know, we are, like, chilling between, like, working, yeah. except, like, eat, right? But every fucking meal, like, I don't know where, we, oh, uh, we're going out with Enrico tonight, he's taking us somewhere special. Mm-hmm. The, remember when I was a food influencer for a minute, and I was getting, like, free shit? What do we we got Jenny's ice creams? No, for someone a while. someone w- wanted to send me like a special pan and like a knife for some you take shit. advantage of it. Someone wanted to send me like a well because you ordered cooking shit. You I guess I kind of was that for was a little quarant- bit too. I was like quarantine. Yeah, you're right. Everyone was. Um, yeah. I mean, I wasn't like making sourdough bread. Right, right, right. right. But I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know if I go to fucking like if I'm like this in New York. Right. Like every meal is like a fucking movie. I don't know, bro. Yeah. Um. Also, we're in Italy, the food capital of the world. My thing is that uh, I wouldn't, I don't normally do it when I'm not on vacation, but my thing is when I'm on vacation, I think it's like, especially you and I who like take pride in like, oh, you know, we're, these are these are meals that are being paid for by the corporate card, and if we're going to do that, we want to fucking have, you know, experiences. We want to <laughs> get the best shit. Get some content out of it. Um, and yes, that too. So I, I'm not really ashamed, but you know me. I have no fucking shame at all. I do think that neither you or I are good at taking food No, picks. no, no, no. I mean, like, I have an old-ass iPhone. I need a fucking update. Yeah, I mean, the guy was like, yeah, this looks like fucking someone just busted on a veal trap. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? Also, that was not a photogenic dish in right. and of itself. Right. I think we've actually been doing pretty good. Like, our fine, the picks that we had from the fine dining place, yeah. that shit was looking like fucking Kubrick. Because the lighting was sharp yeah. there. Kubrickian. Um, all right, we're wrapping up here. Uh, again, we played this drinking game. Shit, I just have a note here that's like, even though it's not really a competition, it feels like it gets competitive. Maybe that's just in my own mind. And then <laughs> shit you. fucking escalates, dude. Where, again, I just have a note that uh, I say, I think I was I was calling you an island boy and singing you the song, and then you were getting pissed off, and then you attacked me. <laughs> I'm my, sorry for that. No, it's fine. Um, I think I threatened to kick you in the chest. Because <laughs> I was on the couch. Yeah. I mean, if you watch the video, it's the same, it's the same couch we're sitting on. I just have my notice. I was assaulted by an island boy. Very I, antagonistic moves by the end of the night. That was my general fucking note. That I, I took, took a beer down to bed, had a single sip, and just left it. One of the big fucking Moretti's. Yeah. So that was a complete waste of a big, oh, of a it big was a, boy. Oh, it was a Moretti that you wasted, not one of your shitty wheat beers. Right. One of my Fuck. great fucking German Paul <sighs> Hoffeweizen, whatever. Damn. Another note from this game is... Uh, Unlike the first night, we hit the fuck, marry, kill square, which, like, we took to, like, we, like, each took, well, it happened twice, right. and our fuck, marry, kills were very, I'm not going to say who were, or who was in our, because people that people would know, and I'm not going to say that because this will be public, and that's very rude of us, but, yo, it's the game, it's not our fault, complete opposites, very surprising. Uh, yeah, no, I think we hit, we had one in common. Of, I just, like the, I, of like the permutations, right? Me, not like the full three, but like one of the three. Definitely, definitely not on the same page uh, when it comes to that stuff. I thought that was interesting. And then, yeah, today uh, was just you being a cranky, hungover baby and bailing, and I just did my own thing. Well, you went shopping, like for your wife. Yeah, but you could have gone shopping with me. No, and I, and I wanted to, but I, I like really had to shit. I, like, yeah, I had like diarrhea. But I, I had a nice little day. Went to Prada to cop a gift for JB, and then I uh, had a crispy McBacon at McDonald's. Was the menu much different than American well, McDonald's? Than so, American Mech? Yeah. Um, when I used to go to like Pity Womo and stuff, I always got the. I would always get it. Episode title: Italian Mech. Where's uh, Mech? I don't know. I was going to go for something more like Chow Milano or right, sure. Mambo Italiano. Italiano. Okay, we'll do Chow Milano. Il Bambinos. Um, but um, no, the crispy McBacon, I think, is a European. Exclusive. Uh, is it just what is it? It is a cheeseburger with a different type of sauce, not like special sauce. It's like a different sauce, and then um, uh, a bacon, and it's like uh, yeah, it's a, fucking it, hungry. Yo, honestly, bro, it uh, because of our kind of like shittyish lunch at Panino Teca, I was kind of like, you know what? Let me let me bring it back, even though it's to like a, a, to a classic, even though it's like a foreign. And so th- it's exactly what I want because it's just like a little different twist on what you could you would normally mm. get back in the states. So. Um, yeah, and then it's like when you zest a lemon instead of just squeezing the juice. Exactly, dude. When life gives you lemons, zest, zest them. them shits. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Italy he, fucking here in rules. Milan, we love it. The greatest country. Honestly, bro, this is my favorite fucking place oh, to visit. Let's talk about this. Where So as throwing fits, we need to go to Japan. Yes. Right? I would love to go of to course. Korea. Yeah. Um, European countries, 
that you haven't been to yet that you want to go to? Go. Okay. Uh, Spain. I feel That's like crazy I'm, you haven't been there. I know. I'm, it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, let's see. Spain. Honestly, it's a lot of... I haven't, I'm not that well traveled. Uh, going to Manchester was my first time in England. I think I said that on pod. Uh, so for me, it would be like in no particular order, um, Spain... Um, the Netherlands, and then uh, Sweden, probably. Or anywhere, maybe Denmark even, but uh, Germany would be like a little low on my list. Oh, Though per- uh, Berlin might be... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> even though I'm Aryan passing. I'm doing Speaking the... Speaking of code see, switching. You can't see, but I'm doing the circumcision motion with my hands. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I guess I would... I mean, for me, really, it's just like I got a lot of traveling still to do. And Asia. I got to go to Asia, bro. Yeah. Jen has been where they, where they speak Chinese. You <laughs> fucking for okay. me, it's I'm Portugal. My Chinese. Portugal. Um, more of Italy. Mm. Yeah. Like as an adult, sure. Uh, Ireland to go see, you know, fatherland. Of course. Uh, I guess Iceland, mm. and I want to see like a mm. little bit of Central Europe, like Austria, Netherlands. Um, yeah, okay. that's it. Nice little hit list. Uh, Maybe hopefully, Eastern, would Eastern Europe be fucking lit? I don't know, bro. That's where like, like I'm pressing. Fr- that's where like I'm from, um, like Romania and Hungary and nah, shit. Not, like nah, no, that. we're not uh, going there. Buda- Budapest. <laughs> um, all right, yeah. If anyone, if if <laughs> if anyone has any fucking leads on uh, how to get free trips, yeah, bro, we're traveling touch, pod now. If you want to put us in touch with some uh, fucking corporate overlords? Um, holler at the goddamn We've motherfucking done four, boys. Four trips in two months. I know, dude. Yo, I'm fucking. A lot. And it's fun, and it's, like, obviously a good time, but, like, uh, though, honestly, when you bailed after lunch, I was thinking, I'm, like, and I knew you were hungover, and I figured, like, yeah, I probably had the fucking shit. It wasn't, it really wasn't the hangover, it was, like, the bubble guts. Like, Um, I, yeah. But you were, you were kind of in, like, a a, a sour-ass mood, I guess that's because you were in physical pain, but I'm, like, oh, damn, like, he's probably at the point where on a trip where he gets sick of me. So I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll just let him go. And I'll well, it's be- good to have, like, separate time. Oh, of course. I mean, honestly, spending most of, when we're not working and we're in the Airbnb, it's not like we're, like, hanging out. <laughs> there was one night, we didn't mention this, where you're like, yo, let's get a nightcap. Let's get beers. And I got beers. And we come back, and you're like, all right, see you. I'm going to take it down to my bedroom. I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> like, it like, hurt my feelings. <laughs> I was like, oh, we're doing, I didn't know we were doing bed beers. I thought we were hanging out, but okay. Bed beers, bro. Yeah. Um. But, uh, yeah, this has been the only podcast that matters. Uh, we'll be back in the States next week. We're going to get this video figured out. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, or I guess that's next week. What are we going to pot over Thanksgiving? I don't know. You're not going out of town. I'm only going to Jersey, so it should be pretty easy. I guess we're going to pot on, like, Wednesday? Go. Yeah, and obviously, guys, we're trying to make a core for happen. It's just scheduling. Um, hopefully, you guys have been, joy- have been enjoying the eps with Chuck and the chef separately. And, yeah, hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll get everyone together. Yo, we um, got a private COVID nurse coming through yeah. um, in an hour and a half. So, ciao. Ciao. Ciao, Milano. Ciao. Ciao. ciao.